This video will show you how you can set up a project for ESP32 boards in C-Line on Windows. We'll go through the whole process of setting up the ESP32 development framework and configuring and running a sample project. Before we dive in, make sure that the USB bridge of your ESP32 board is correctly identified. Open the device manager, plug the USB cable into your board and make sure Windows recognizes the device. If that is not the case, please download and install the correct driver. As you can see here, after I installed the driver on this machine, it correctly shows the Silicon Labs USB bridge. In addition, you will need a recent Python installation, in my case version 3.9.6, and Git to download the ESP32 framework directly from its GitHub repository. For compilation, and since I'm not all too familiar with the Visual Studio compiler, I downloaded a recent version of MinchGW. I set up a toolchain for it in C-Line by selecting an installation directory, and then I tested it quickly with a simple Hello World program. And now we're ready to download and install the ESP32 framework. Create an ESP directory somewhere on your hard drive. Open a command line and change to this directory. Using Git, you can clone the entire ESP32 framework to your computer. You can find the link to the GitHub repository in the description. Since this will certainly take a while, we'll fast forward the video. After the download is done, it's time to install the ESP32 framework. Change to the ESP IDF directory that was created and call the install.bat script. This script will unpack all requirements to a .espressive folder in your home directory. Additionally, it will install a dedicated Python environment required for working with ESP32. Again, this takes a moment and we forward the video. When the installation is finished, we could call the export script, which sets specific environment variables for this terminal to successfully compile an ESP32 program. We will use these variables to adjust the project settings in C-Lion so that we can compile, flash, and monitor ESP32 programs without leaving the IDE. Inside the ESP IDF directory, there are many examples. Here, I just copied the Hello World example into our ESP folder. Switch to CLion and open this folder as a new CMake project and trust it. After opening, you can see that we get a CMake error that tells us that required CMake files cannot be found. So let's head back to the terminal and call the export script again to find out which environment variables we need. One of the major things seems to be the IDF path variable. But also note that the export scripts prepended many folders to our path variable that all contain the .espressive folder in our home directory. Let's take care of the IDF path variable first. Go to File, Settings, and under Build Execution Deployment, you find the CMake settings for our project. Click the small button on the right side of Environment and create a new IDF path variable. The value is the path that you can copy from the terminal. After closing this dialog, CLine will rerun CMake and now complain that Python dependencies cannot be found. All these dependencies are found through the changed path variable that we haven't set. So head back to the terminal, show the contents of the path variable and copy everything that contains the .espressive folder. Don't forget to copy the final semicolon. Then go back to CLion and open the CMake environment settings once more. In the bottom, scroll down until you find the path entry. And this is important, prepend everything you just copied into the value field and then press enter. After CMake, finished its run, we are once more presented with an error. But this time, we get a hint that this might be due to a previously cached configuration. 
You have to know that CMake tries to incorporate change settings, which sometimes fails. In the CMake tool window, use the settings button on the left to rerun the configuration completely fresh. That was the last necessary step. And now CLine has all the information to set up our project. You'll find that many run configurations were automatically created if you check the toolbar. We can go on and select the app run configuration and go to build, build app to compile our project. By the way, if you don't see the main toolbar, you can enable it by going to view, appearance, and then toolbar. The first run of building the project will compile all depending ESP modules and take a bit longer. When everything is finished, you will find that the Hello World app was built successfully. However, the major advantage of using CLine is not that you can simply build your ESP32 project from within the IDE. The advantage is that you can use all the advanced code insight features of CLine like auto-completing all ESP32 symbols and functions, jumping from usages to definitions, quickly checking the documentation, or advanced refactorings like renaming functions or symbols. So before we continue and I show you how you can flash and monitor your ESP32 program, let me quickly demonstrate some of the code inside features. Let's close the build window and open the one source file the Hello World program has. The first thing you note is that you can call quick documentation on ESP32 symbols, which then shows you the rendered documentation that is available in the source code of ESP32. Jumping to the actual source line is only one click away. I hope you can appreciate the project tool window on the left that can be adjusted to show the file you're currently seeing in the editor. There, you could browse the whole ESP32 source code. Although it's not part of your project, it was successfully attached when setting up the project as we did. Just note how easy it is to quickly see what's behind the definition or jump to the sources when you want more insight on a symbol or a function. Since now CLine knows all about ESP32, it will happily suggest possible names while you're typing. That will drastically increase your development experience. And certainly, there's nothing that prevents you from calling quick documentation even on the auto-completion list. To continue with this tutorial, let's see if we can flash and monitor our ESP32 chip. Select the flash run configuration from the toolbar and build it. Note that I used the shortcut here, which is Ctrl F9 on Windows and Linux. After the build is done, you see that you get a percentage indicator for flashing the chip, and it appears that now our program was successfully transferred to the ESP chip. Now select the monitor run configuration and hit Ctrl F9 again. We get an error that the serial port could not be opened. And if we scroll up, we see that we can set this through the ESP port variable. Open the device manager one last time to find that the ESP device uses COM3 on this machine. Then go back to the settings of CLine and, like we did before, define a new variable ESP port that you set to COM3. Click OK and wait until CMake is finished reconfiguring the project. Then try to build the monitor configuration again. And there we have it. Our ESP32 chip reports back through the serial monitor, showing some information and a countdown. I hope you liked this tutorial that showed the whole process of installing the ESP32 framework and setting up and running an example project in CLine. Thank you for watching.